What's up gamers, I'm The Lights, and I'm going to be talking about one of the most intriguing weapons to release during Season of the Deep, or more accurately, re-release during Season of the Deep, and that is the Supremacy Kinetic 140 RPM Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Rifle. Now craftable and with new perks from the Last Wish raid. I'm always interested in knowing all of the new hotness for boss DPS in Destiny, and Supremacy gets a great DPS role of Rewind Rounds and Bait and Switch. Rewind Rounds essentially gives you 14 shots in the magazine if you don't miss any, and Bait and Switch gives you a 35% damage buff after shooting all three of your weapons. This is one of the best DPS rolls a gun can get in this game. 140 RPM snipers, however, and well, snipers in general, have been out of the DPS meta for quite a long time, excluding swap combos with Izanagi's Burden or Cloud Strike. So when I first saw this perk pool, I kind of brushed it off, because while it was a great roll, it was on a 140 RPM sniper. What I should have considered, however, was the slow trickle of buffs from the last few months that this gun is going to be benefiting from. In Lightfall, kinetic special weapons now do 15% more damage to unshielded enemies, up from 5 Supremacy's kinetic, so we're getting that. 140 RPM snipers specifically had their reserves increased and their recoil reduced, giving you more total damage and a little more ease of use. We're getting that. And recently with Season of the Deep, all sniper rifles not named Izanagi's Burden got a 10% PvE damage buff. So that's quite a lot piling up there. And when we look at the numbers, Supremacy Unbuffed is hitting for 20,691 damage on this Lost Sector boss. Has 140 RPM rate of fire. Compare that to another popular and potent DPS strategy, a linear fusion rifle, which Unbuffed hits for 45,296, but at only about 57 RPM. So that's a little less than half the damage per shot of the linear, but at a little more than double the fire rate. To get some hard figures on this, 20,691 times 140 RPM divided by 60 seconds in a minute is 48,279 DPS, completely unbuffed for the sniper. For the linear, 45,296 times 57 rounds per minute divided by 60 seconds in a minute is 43,031 DPS for the unbuffed linear. So the sniper's higher. This is, of course, probably the simplest comparison one could possibly do, and by no means definitively states that the snipers like better damage than linears or anything. But it tells us that there might be something here, that this sniper's output is at least worth looking into. So let's do just that. Something I want to get out of the way right off the bat is the other options outside of bait and switch that have gotten some attention. Fourth times the charm lets you essentially shoot forever and greatly improves your ammo economy, though since your gun doesn't have a damage perk at that point, it falls very far behind bait and switch in terms of DPS, even when you factor in the extra reloading you'd need to do with the bait and switch roll. More importantly though, it falls very far behind other meta DPS strategies so there gets to a point where it's not even worth using. The other perk people have taken a liking to a little bit is Kinetic Tremors, which is a little more complicated, but much more compelling. Kinetic Tremors procs off of just three hits with Supremacy, and Enhanced Kinetic Tremors only requires two hits. Kinetic Tremors does its damage in three waves with a one second gap in between each wave. Each wave deals damage equal to about 40% of a crit from the weapon, so with three shots to make three waves that deal 40% damage each, that's essentially a 40% damage buff, and well, Kind of. The problem is that Kinetic Tremors can't reactivate while the Tremors are tremoring. So you can't re-trigger it until the effects run out. Which makes it fall behind bait and switch by quite a lot for DPS in any sort of practical usage duration. Just shooting three shots and swapping off could definitely have some value though, but I have yet to think of a practical application for this. There is also the drawback of the Kinetic Tremors persisting from where they were activated from, not the boss that they were activated from and therefore missing more mobile targets quite easily. I'm not going to go into specifics for every DPS strategy in the game, because deciding where to draw the line on what qualifies as viable or not, and what qualifies as practical or not for the average player is just, is just arbitrary at the end of the day. Additionally, there are other circumstances like the encounter itself that skews results in favor of certain strategies, just know that most of the top DPS strategies of the last year or so hover around or clear 100,000 damage per second with the relevant surge mods, a 30% weakened debuff from something like Tether or Tractor, and a 25% weapon enhancing buff from Weapons of Light, Radiant, or Well, or whatever. 
any variance above or below that 100,000 number usually has some sort of trade-off. For example, dumping rockets with a clown cartridge hothead buffed by Gallarhorn has much higher than 100,000 DPS, usually somewhere in the 130 to 140,000 neighborhood, but has poor total damage compared to something like a linear fusion rifle like Cataclysmic, which has lower DPS, usually right at or just below 100,000 depending on your rotation, but has higher total damage and can be sustained for longer. For reference, you can dump 10 rockets with a field prep clown hothead in like 15 seconds, and that's, you know, assuming you have that roll and rallied with reserves and all that. These numbers and the numbers for all strategies can get higher or lower depending on rotations as well, other things you're using to crank out damage, anything like that. But a bait and switch cataclysmic and a clown cartridge hothead I'd imagine are things most people will be familiar with. So now back to supremacy. With bait and switch on this gun, the first question to answer is what guns we pair with it to activate bait and switch, since this is going to inherently be a multi-gun strategy at that point. Everyone pretty much came to the conclusion that for bait and switch on Cataclysmic, you paired it with Izanagi's Burden or Wither Horde in your kinetic slot and just used an energy primary or whatever workhorse energy weapon you wanted to use. For Supremacy, the relationship changes quite a bit because, of course, Supremacy is taking the slot of Wither Horde and Izanagi which puts those off the table. We can retain the workhorse general purpose energy weapon and then pair supremacy with a heavy weapon. And for this, we have quite a few options. The ones I found most interesting were tractor cannon, Gallarhorn, a legendary rocket launcher, and anarchy. Tractor cannon's benefits are obvious since you're buffing your whole team's damage by 30%, which is very good if you don't have another debuff source like tether. The drawbacks are that, for one thing, Tractor Cannon has very little range. It's farther than you think, but at the end of the day, pairing a sniper and a shotgun is a little weird. If you are solo, don't have a debuff source, and are in a situation where you can actually use this setup, the damage is about on par with other options since Tractor will be buffing Supremacy's damage considerably, and it can even pass other options if you're also using Tractor to buff something like a super or a bunch of grenades or something like that. Though this is all a little niche. Gallarhorn is another one that you can use. It's gonna have considerably more value in team activities where your teammates are benefiting from the Wolfpack rounds buff. Gallarhorn has incredible DPS on bosses for being essentially a support weapon, but it gets crushed by other top options to compensate a little bit for the massive benefits it gives your team. The Pack Hunter buff getting to your team is the big thing we care about with Gallarhorn. That buff lasts 15 seconds, which means we just need to shoot Galley every 15 seconds. There are a lot of different rotations you can do to make this happen, and to my surprise, pretty much all of them are higher DPS than just spamming Galley, even if you're spamming Galley very efficiently through something like Reign of Fire or Threat of Ascent. Highest DPS with Supremacy is going to be to just shoot a single Galley shot, proc bait and switch, and then roll with Supremacy for two mags straight. Then your bait and switch timer will run out a little before Pack Hunter does, so you can shoot another galley to reapply Pack Hunter for your team and reapply bait and switch for supremacy for yourself. Downside of this, and this applies to legendary rockets too, you don't need to land crits with a rocket, but you very much need to land crits with supremacy. Because of this, the situations where you would do both can seem rare. Another downside is you'll run out of supremacy ammo after having only shot three Gallarhorn rockets or so, so you're going to go back to just dumping Galley for the rest of the damage phase after two rotations, unless you change your rotation in some way. For example, shooting two Gallarhorn shots every time you have it out. Legendary rocket launchers are currently the DPS kings, with Apex Predator from Last Wish, Hothead from Vanguard, and Cold Comfort from Ghosts of the Deep, leading the pack when buffed by Gallarhorn. Supremacy under optimal conditions is still about 10% behind these rockets under optimal conditions. And there are all kinds of caveats on both ends that we'll talk about, but you could potentially get the best of both worlds by just running both of them. The Reconstruction Explosive Light Apex Predator or an auto-loading holster hothead feel like the most obvious choices for this pairing. With Apex Predator, you can shoot off two rockets, proc bait and switch for supremacy, roll with supremacy for two mags, and by then, your Apex Predator will be reloaded with two more rockets for you to rinse and repeat. We don't shoot Apex Predator in between mags in this rotation so as not to eat into the time that Supremacy has bait and switch up, which is important since bait and switch can't be reactivated during its timer. With Hothead, the rotation is the same, but you're only shooting one rocket since you have auto-loading holster instead of reconstruction. 
Anarchy is the pairing that interested me the most. Anarchy should pair very well with Bait and Switch in theory, since it gives damage over time and is very ammo efficient. It's also just a very useful gun to have in encounters that you can use fairly freely, since its ammo economy is very strong. This helps make up for the fact that you really want to save sniper ammo for DPS. Anarchy basically just ends up being an extra 20 to 30,000 DPS on top of whatever you're doing. So for Supremacy, it basically just increases your DPS by like 20 to 30% when accounting for the couple seconds where you're swapping guns and shooting Anarchy and firing Supremacy and reloading Supremacy and all that stuff. So it's just quite good. Depending on how clean you are with your rotations, this will be the highest DPS setup. Now to get back to that massive problem, because it's a massive problem with using Anarchy with Supremacy as well. Ammo economy on this gun is a joke. Let me put it this way. An average boss damage phase in Destiny lasts about 30 seconds. The Ogre from Grasp of Avarice is a 30 second damage phase. Morgeth in Last Wish is a 30 second damage phase. Atheon in Vault of Glass, 30 second damage phase. Those are three examples just to kind of give you an idea. Some are longer, some are shorter, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to carry around about 30 seconds worth of juice for a damage phase. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Supremacy, after rallying with triple kinetic reserves, gets 35 shots, which seems great, right? Linear linears only get like 20 something or whatever. No, no, because you see, 140 rounds per minute. Supremacy can shoot 35 shots in 15 seconds. So most Supremacy rotations are going to run out of juice after 15 seconds or so. For that 15 seconds, you're cooking. You are cooking for sure. But this pretty much automatically kills rotations with Tractor Cannon or Anarchy or anything like that because you need your heavy weapon to do meaningful damage and use meaningful field time once Supremacy runs out of ammo or hopefully before. So then we're basically just stuck with Gallarhorn and Legendary Rockets as our damage pairing. As I mentioned though, the DPS of Rocket Dumping is about the same as the Supremacy rotations in most cases, but it's also easier to do on average, it doesn't rely on crits, and it has a slew of other positives. A positive of Supremacy that partially helps with the ammo economy situation is that you can leverage Special Finisher very easily to make special ammo for Supremacy. But piling up special ammo within arm's reach of where you're DPSing from is just not going to be worth the trouble 99 times out of 100. In between damage phases, it's fine, and you have a rocket launcher to fall back on. But you could also just use the rocket launcher the whole time, which then frees up your kinetic slot for something you can use freely throughout the encounter. And more often than not, let's be honest, bosses in this game die to a whole team spamming rockets on them anyway. In longer damage phases, you will run out of rockets, though. So we're in a situation where we could run two guns together that both have poor ammo economy, but have very high DPS, which sounds very reminiscent of the Izanagi rocket swapping strategy, which is also a very potent damage strategy. And surprisingly, I think the most relevant thing to compare to given what we've learned so far. Additionally, since the rockets for both setups basically use the same roles, the comparison is really just Izzy to Supremacy. Izzy's biggest strength is obviously in Hone Edge, of course, allowing it to do unprecedented burst damage for a special weapon. The big drawback is the reload for the times 4 shot, which cannot be sped up by reload speed sources. An auto-loading holster rocket launcher offsets this weakness somewhat by canceling part of the reload animation and using that long reload animation to auto-load the rocket. The slow reload of the rocket and the slow reload of Izzy in a strange way combine and become a seamless combo that offsets the same weakness in two different weapons. The supremacy situation is similar in that both weapons are offsetting each other's weaknesses, but in this case the weakness is ammo economy since supremacy's reload animation is quite fast at base and can be sped up. The DPS of the Izzy setup and of the supremacy setup is actually about the same. It'll vary a little bit, especially in Izzy's case, but they're about the same. The reason Izzy varies so much is actually a huge strength of the setup, which is in its flexibility. You don't really lose anything by throwing a grenade or a super at most points in the Izzy rocket swapping rotation. Supremacy does not have this strength. The bait and switch timer heavily incentivizes staying on Supremacy to get off as many shots as possible during the timer. 
Another thing Supremacy and Izanagi have in common for our purposes is also that ammo economy that we are talking about. In between damage phases, same deal for Izzy. You can leverage Special Finisher, you're going to be alright in between phases. But Izanagi only gets 5 shots during the damage phase, assumed you rallied with reserves for your rocket, which you should. So if all you're doing is shooting Izzy and shooting a rocket, you can go through all of your ammo in less than 20 seconds. Which is similar to what we talked about if you were only using Supremacy. So clearly both of these guns' ammo economy is pretty poor. So which has less terrible ammo economy, Izzy or Supremacy? The answer to that is actually pretty resoundingly Supremacy, which surprised me. Izanagi, if he rallied with no reserves, gets five shots of Honed Edge times four. Each Honed Edge shot hits for 112,448 damage. 112,448 times five is 562,240. So Izanagi's total damage is 562,240. Supremacy gets 26 shots without reserves and hits for 20,691 damage per shot or 27,941 damage with bait and switch up. So as long as you're using the buff like at all, as long as you trigger the buff a single time, the total damage is better. In what I would call average circumstances, which is three unbuffed shots in the case of Supremacy, we have 25% better total damage with Supremacy. So if you're in a damage phase where you can get off all of your reserves in both your rocket and your sniper, Supremacy is just better. Anything shorter than that, and it gets a little tricky because it's going to come down to where in your rotation exactly you ended. But by and large, the DPS is about the same, which is very interesting and pretty cool if you ask me. So now there is all kinds of crazy stuff you can do to churn out more damage from weapons in this game. The numbers I used in this video are purposefully a little broad and easy to obtain for that reason, since everything is very case by case, player by player. So I try to use testing that is realistically achievable by all classes, all builds, and all encounters so that it's at least as all-encompassing as I can manage. The point of this video is not to say that Izanagi is dead, it's not to say that Supremacy is the new DPS king, because neither are true. If anything, this video solidifies Rockets as the kings of DPS even. Just keep in mind going forward that Supremacy is the real deal, and definitely something to take note of and keep in the vault at the very least if you have the means. I know I personally have been using it to quite a lot of success in Reigns and Dungeons lately just because it's something different, but it's keeping up with everything else in the game, so that's rad. But that'll be it for me for today, folks. Thanks for sticking around. Be sure to like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you next time. Deuces.